Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is a paper entitled Prototypical Networks for Fuse of Learning. This is by Jake Snell, Kevin Swersky, and also Richard S. Gimo. So, in this video, I just try to explain what's happened in this paper. So, this paper is very simple and provide a much better result than uh, previous methods in terms of fuse of learning. So, this paper introduces uh, prototypical networks, which means that uh, a prototype is like a representation of a particular class. So we can see that this is like a summary or representation of a class. So we can say that this is as a representation. And for the few sort learning, so in this paper, they use uh, the regime of the meta learning so as you can see that the meta learning they try to learn many many tasks and then when there is let's say a new task coming with different data set they can uh, this model can classify easily without uh, retraining again and in and in terms of future learning which means that it only use few sample of data to classify to predict sample so let's we see what's going on here and we can see from this figure one for the few sort so in few sort learning they have a terminology called support set and query set so let's we move to this maybe we can move to the this notation first so from this uh, notation you can see here that uh, in few sort classification we have a small uh, support set with unlabeled example. So this is a small support set which contains 1 to n. Mostly uh, the number of n could be, could be 1, could be 2, could be 3. And in the literature we can see that it could be 5 or 10. And uh, if n is equal to 1, it means that the support set that we use is only one sample for one class. If we use, let's say, n is 5, so we have support set of 5 samples for one class. It means that this particular class has a small number of samples that uh, become a uh, uh, what do you call that a basis to to do comparison to classify something and then uh, so each x1 each xi sorry it is in the real dimensional we in the real uh, set in the dimensional future factor and we and also the way i which is its label it is between one and the number of classes and sk is a support set with label class k and actually they also have like query query set so the query set is a sample or data set that doesn't have any label at all so this is the unlabeled uh, unlabeled samples or data so let's see what's happened here actually so in prototypical networks you can see here that they have in here the number of uh, the number of n is five because it have five support samples they have five support samples and they try to get the average of e of five for each classes and they have like a centroid for each classes so this c1 c2 and c3 is behave as a prototype so we can see that this is like a average or centroid for five number of support set if you didn't know what is uh few sort learning so few sort learning is actually you try to measure the distance or the similarity between uh, your query set 
with a variable support set. So for example, in terms of the letter recognition, let's say we, we have letter A to letter Z, and we have a model that try to predict what letter it is. So let's say if we have a support set of, of n equals to 5, so we have a different figure or different images for each class. So A is one class, B is another class. So let's say they have a variation of A, A is something like this, something like this, something like this, until 5. And also B, B like this, something like that. Okay, so this is with n five, which means it is five uh, samples in the support set. So what this future learning do? Let's say if there is a new sample, which is a query sample that we want to predict. Let's say something like this, and this try to calculate the similarity, and this similarity can be in form of let's say AQD and distance or it could be in form of let's say constant similarity and you try to calculate the similarity between your support set let's say this one uh, let's say this query set is compared with this one compared with this one this one and that one and then you compare all of them and you pick with the most similar or with the closest distance between the query set and the support set and you classify that as, as the prediction of the model. So that's the basic idea of user learning. So in this case, they use the prototype. So rather than we try to compare with five different way, so we get the representation, representation of all of these five samples in the support set and we have the prototype for A this also we try to get the representation which is the average or the mean or the centroid of all of these uh, support cells and we can say that this is prototype b so this is what's happened in this uh, model so they, they they try to get the representation for all for all classes with the own support support set so when we can see in the model here, sorry, so this is, uh, so it said that let's say we have an embedding or embedding function that map from the higher dimension to the lower dimension. It said this is f pi, sorry, f pi. So D is um, mo mostly it's a larger dimension with learnable parameters pi. And once let's say this uh, this support set sorry, so this support set is calculated, which is a number of, of samples, and they try to average the sum of the of the of the future factor of the amending factors and then they divide it by the number of the support set in that particular class and you get the ck which is the prototype which is similar to this one and then the way that it predicts is simply by calculating the distance so in this way the distance function is uh, take two value it takes two value which has the same dimensions and mapping to the to the uh, real numbers between zero uh, exclusively and infinite infinite inclusively and as you can see here that the distance that they use is actually a Euclidean distance or l2 norm they use a Euclidean distance and then uh, the way that they predict is the same with the softmax layers, but this is like a distance-based softmax layers. So you 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 have to calculate the distance between the prototypes and with the future factors or em or embedding factors of your query sets, and then once you get the distance, 
then you have to do the inverse using a negative here because in the soft mix layers the more you get the value the higher the value uh, then you get the higher probability but in terms of distance at the lowest the distance it's supposed to be provide higher probability so that's why you put negative there and uh, that's the way uh, you you try to predict when the prototypical networks using the soft mix layers and in details the algorithms is like this so uh, using the training episode loss computation for prototypical networks so let's say this is the n is the number of examples in the training sets and k is the number of classes in the training set so these training sets contains large number of uh, samples and then uh, this is nc is less than or equal to k is the number of classes per episode so in this case we try we do not train all classes at the same time so they try to train with the much smaller sample so the much smaller classes compared to the available classes that we have and then ns <coughs> is the number of support example per class and q is the number of query example per class and then random sample is actually just a random sampling uh, for the uniformly and the random from set without replacement <coughs> and this is a training set which is contains a lot of uh, data and then each has the its own level and dk denotes the subset of d containing all elements x i and y i such that y i is equal to its classes so this is what's happening we try to select the class indices for episode which is we have to make sure that this is less than k and then after that uh, this is less than k and then after that for each k in that episode of labels we do select the support example from this one sorry and also we select the query uh, set so we have the support set and we have the query set for that particular classes and then we compute the prototype uh, that we have discussed before which is just the average and once we have all of the prototypes here then we calculate the loss using this one based on the number of nc which is less than k and then this is the uh, the uh, for all the sample in the query set it try to uh, update the loss based on the standard loss and here you can see that they try to minimize the distance between the embedding factors of the query set with the with its prototypes and at the, at the same time it's try to minimize using the cross entropy loss so this is uh, the simple way actually to use meta learning based on the prototypical networks which is uh, will produce much faster prediction compared to a uh, large number of way of uh, comparing the few set learning so when we see the results here this is for the omni lot there is constantly improve uh, provide the highest results compared to others previous methodologies and then in terms of the this is the mini image net it's also provide much better result than the previous methods and for the cube 200 which is the bed species specific for the fine grained classification you can see that prototypical network also achieve much better results than previous methodologies so I think that's all for the prototypical network for the few set learnings.